Hi there, this is episode 31. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification right now. It's Saidani Saitusin right here on the RSS with HD. Hi there, welcome to the show. As I mentioned, it's episode 31 right here with myself and a very dark looking. Were you on holiday, Harish? No, I can't find a lie. <laughs> How do I look yeah, now? This is not his natural color, but although he... I look super want... tan, right? I know, I know. You were you were on a holiday with your your your, your family over the Imaginary weekend. Imaginary holiday. Actually, doing yeah. more of the gardening. Uh, I know. Yeah. <laughs> but great to have you uh, on again. Yeah. Uh, would like Likewise. to thank, uh, obviously, uh, Amnig, our yeah. uh, sponsor for the RSS we're mm-hmm. facing. Now, we've got something really, really intriguing, or someone mm-hmm. very, very uh, intriguing, because we haven't seen him for, for a long, long while. He's very short. <laughs> no, he's not. Oh, uh, he's... <laughs> and uh, obviously, um, you may not have seen him for a while, but let's welcome him onto the, the show. Said Adne, Said Adne, Said Adne, Said Adne, Said Adne, Said Adne, how have you been doing? Don't be Good. fooled, because the, the guy is like six foot bloody something. So six foot two no, only, like. uh, yeah, la, but that's big, taller than my five seven. So <laughs> always be taller. <laughs> Thank you for uh, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Thanks for having. Me. Hi guys. Hello. Okay, Arish, I'll yes. let you do the drilling <laughs> and the grilling. <laughs> no, no, please don't 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 say that. Uh, you know, it's like grilling, drilling. What kind of vocabulary is that? Well, oh, you it's know, supposed to be a kid friendly show. You know. Yeah, it <laughs> well, is. Is it okay? Oh, anyway, okay. <laughs> I said, "How are you?" Good, good. Thanks. How are you doing? Fine, thank you. I think the last we met, like I mentioned earlier, was at Stanley Bernard's uh, wedding. wedding. That was like yeah. what two years, three years ago. Yes, yeah, about about that. Yep. The time flies. Anyway, um, so we have Said Adni with us, and uh, we're not going to talk about fluff today. Um, you. You know, you've played the sport. You've you've played the international level. Uh, you're back in the sport, in fact, um, at the M3. Um, yeah. You were commentating uh, with the Malaysian Football League uh, for a brief period of time. Actually, two years is not really brief per se. Um, yeah. But yeah, so you you've you spent a lot of time in football. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, how has football in Malaysia developed over the past fifteen years or so, in your eyes? Oh wow. Um, well, I'd, I'd say it's developed a lot because, um, you know, I, I've been to some teams where, you know, they, they are trying to make a difference. In the yeah. Uh, but, you know, at the end of the day, uh, financially, all mm-hmm. the teams are not, you know, are not that stable. So, you know, there's only a amount of time where you can be putting the money every every season. So, like, I, when I was in Kelantan, they had a good project. Um, mm-hmm. You know, they had the best players yeah, the, the you know we won the Malaysia Cup and then uh, seasons after that they won the league and all that. So you know they they try you know it's, they're trying to develop. But I mean, like for me, you know, you, you look at Kelantan now. Where are they? You know how 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 are they from being a, a championship side, a championship winning side to now they're in the second division. They're um, financially unstable. They don't know what's going to happen in the future. Uh, so you know. Now we look at JDT. Obviously, we know JDT is the the, the most stable club in the country, and um, you know probably in Asia. Yeah. So they, yeah. they, I think, I think they are the um, the target where all all teams should be looking at. It's not easy because obviously, mm-hmm. like um, I said, the financial uh, situation for all teams is not the same. But um, yeah, that's the target you need to get. You know, you want to be you want to be one of the best teams. You've got to have the best facilities. You've got to have the best players. You've got to have the best management. And uh, JDT are showing that. So if you look from uh, 15 years ago and you look at uh, now, you know, there's a massive difference where where J- uh, Johor were then and Johor are now. So but, but that's the- just Johor. But that's just Johor, and that's um, that's the only saving grace we have for Malaysian football, mm-hmm. to be honest. Yeah. And, and you know, um, like like them and loathe them. Uh, thank God, there's Joho. But if Joho Darul uh were not, you know, who they are today, 
mm -hmm. you know, what, what would your observation be then? Yeah, um, well, uh, I think if we look at the financial sides, I think, yeah. you know, there's always going to be problems. You know, every season yeah. is the same where you've got uh, teams <laughs> owing salaries. It still happens today. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, like, um, but the football quality wise, I think mm -hmm. it's improved a lot because um, the younger players, the younger generation, we look at the mm -hmm. players like Safari Rashid, uh, he's, mm -hmm. I think, He's the the prime example where you know um, I think I read today that he's got an offer to go and play in Portugal. So mm. I think that's uh, that's great because he he is a player that should be uh, playing at a higher level um, of football if he wants to see how how far he can take his capabilities to. Because we've seen him in the Asian Champions League, um, you know he's obviously shown that he's uh, he's a he's a real talent. So to play week in week out, I think that will test test him uh, how far he can go for his football. Uh, you, you spoke about financial situation. Now, mm -hmm. the FA of Malaysia has got the F30 program. Um, various initiatives are within the program. And one of it is actually turning FAs into FC. Mm -hmm. uh, it looks pretty on paper, but do you think that the administrators would actually embrace such a change? It, it, it has to come whether now, sooner or later, but do you think that our administrators are ready today to embrace such change? Uh, I'm not too sure about if they're ready or not, because um, I think it's been a, it's been a good few years now uh, since they've been trying to privatize all of the clubs. Um, they gave ultimatums where I think this was years ago, but still not, you know, um, most of the teams didn't comply with the ultimatum. And, you know, we've, you know, I think it's uh, we've been the FA has been pre pretty lenient on mm -hmm. uh, on clubs because you know we've been wanting to get the privatization done for such a long time and still to, till today it's still not done. So whether they're ready or not, I'm I'm not too sure. But the the teams out there that are showing initiative initiative, mm -hmm. um, they're trying to get it done properly. And uh, you know, there's I think there's just there's another whole side where you know. They're not doing their best to, to get it done, you know, because they they kind of rely on um, the the state, the the government's money pumping in. So yeah, until you're ready to find your own um, financial capabilities, then I don't think um, they're, they're ready yet. So yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a tough it's a tough cookie because uh, you know there's you, there's two sides of it. There's some teams that are ready. There's some teams that are not ready for it. But, you know, we, we have to push through. I mean, as, as imagine if you are the guardian of Malaysian football, um, mm -hmm. you, you would have to push through such an objective simply because if you don't, then we'll be having this conversation 20 years down the road. Mm -hmm. Your thoughts? Yeah, um, well, I think uh, we should have had this con conversation uh, 20 years 20 ago. 20 years ago. Well. <laughs> you know, because we're through, you know, um, now, now, because the I think in Malaysia we have to follow with the AFC um, AFC rules yeah. and everything, so that's why we're trying to privatize all the clubs, all the teams. But uh, um, yeah, uh, I don't know how long, how much longer uh, the AFC or, or FIFA can wait. You know, but I mm -hmm. think uh, you know they've been waiting a very very long time. So now all the, all the, I think all this um, all this should have been done uh, long before uh, before it was ever mentioned. You know, it should have been done from the start instead of FAs, the FCs. So, you know, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a difficult, difficult um, situation, you know, because not, not everyone's ready for it. Okay. Um, you're, let, let's speak about you now. You're back on the field um, as a player. How does it mm -hmm. feel like? I mean, two years of action, you're yeah. back. Oh, M3 still, um, How's the competition like? Uh, I mean, uh, with the few matches that you've managed to play before the yeah. uh, you know MCO uh, kicked in. Yeah, we only got to play two matches. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I was I was I prepared myself uh, mm -hmm. very well um, because you know I as you could see on on, on my Instagram, mm -hmm. I did a whole transition uh, yeah. from being a big chubby chubby fella to you know now i've lost uh, 20 25 kg so um yeah wow. i i really i really uh wanted to be fit and ready even though it's m3 you know it's not like a premier league or super league you know i wanted to be in my tip-top shape to just mm -hmm. you know prove 
you know, kind of prove that I can go to a, a higher level because the M3, um, I couldn't really uh, judge how the M3's uh, quality is because two yeah. games I don't think is enough. And um, mm -hmm. like the, our last game before the MCO was literally, I think it was just a couple of days before the MCO. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there was a lot of, um, uh, how to say, caution of whether we should mm -hmm. play, whether we shouldn't play. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so I think we... You know, a lot of people weren't in the hundred percent uh, state of mind to to be playing, and even though it's only two two games now, it's mm -hmm. cancelled. So mm -hmm. you know, it's um, very disappointing for me because I was uh, I was looking forward to just getting back in the game, and um, so, yeah. But but uh, future, I mean, uh, moving forward because we know the uh, Premier League and Super League uh, will be uh, you know have started. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, but what you know for yourself, M3 is still not there. So, what 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 are your thoughts about about the rest of the year and uh, for the next season? Yeah, um, yeah, I think uh, for a lot of players in M3, it's a uh, you mm -hmm. know, it's, obviously they're as disappointed as I am. Uh, we all mm -hmm. wanted to continue playing, but you know, it wasn't meant to be. So, just have to look forward to next year. Um, I'm looking forward to. Uh, the league kicking off again. Uh, start commentating this weekend, so it will be it will be good to see Malaysian football again. Um, I think a lot of a lot of fans out there will uh, be anticipating this this weekend. There was also there was a del delayed game on um, uh, a few days ago between PJ City and Trungano, uh, which which uh, yeah, people who watched the game, I I didn't watch it. Um, mm -hmm. I didn't w get to watch it because I was uh, mm -hmm. busy. Um, so you know. I think it's going to be kind of like the, when we watched the English Premier League restart, not all teams were 100%. You know, there wasn't the, the best football you could watch in mm -hmm. the Premier League. So I think it will kind of be the same for our, our Malaysian fo football. So let's let's see see what happens because uh, there have been a lot of friendly matches. Uh, teams, are, teams are getting in shape. So we'll, we'll see what happens on the weekend. So you're commentating. Um, you interview your peers. You're back on the field. What are the key lessons? I mean, would you turn away an interview now? Since you know how it feels like to be turned away, <laughs> because you, 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 you know, you, you've, you've experienced life in front of mm -hmm. the camera and now behind the camera. Actually, yeah. now both <laughs> in mm -hmm. front and behind the camera. So, what are the key lessons that you've learned thus far? Well. Um... I'd say because I, I was very comfortable when I was in my playing days, I was very comfortable in front of camera. So when there was interviews, uh, mm -hmm. you know, I kind of learned off what I was watching on uh, on TV where, you know, you watch a Premier League and all that. So um, it was kind of train. It was kind of training without knowing for the future. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I just felt really comfortable and after that uh, getting into commentating and getting uh doing the interviews you know there's some interviews where i kind of you know messed up because sometimes it's uh there's coaches out there who are quite intimidating and then you just mm -hmm. you know you forget things where you don't yeah. you wanted to ask something but something else came out and sometimes it kind of sounded ridiculous and mm -hmm. i've had i've had one coach go uh i don't understand your question and i'm mm -hmm. like you know i I don't even understand too, and I'm the one asking it. So, yeah. <laughs> okay. so uh, yeah, it, it's a good transition. It's uh, I think uh, um, it's it's good for fo footballers who want to be in media. Uh, yeah. You know, MF MFL has given the opportunity to many many ex fo ex footballers: uh, Rudy Ramli, Akmal Rizal, Amashar Raza, uh, Rizal Zamri, the Harid Hairudin. These are mm -hmm. these are all players who you know have the uh, credibility to comment. On on uh, on on the mat on the game, so mm -hmm. yeah, uh, it's it's good. I miss I miss playing. Uh, you know, the first time I I was commentating, I was uh, kind of you know in my head I should still be there. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I you know should should still. Um, it's never too late. I'm still working hard to tr mm -hmm. to try and get back in the league. We'll see how it how it folds for next year. But uh, common, commentary has been good, you know, you know just keeping in football. Uh, this gives me a broader, broader view of, um, you know, mm -hmm. what goes on on the field, what goes on off the field. Because as a player, you never really know what's 
uh, what's going on be be behind the scenes where, you know, the media thinks we just watch the football, but you don't know what's going on, how, you know, how hard it is for, for broadcasters and, uh, you know, all the crew to set up set up everything to for your viewing so it was very interesting i think there should be an exchange program you know uh, for all footballers and also media personnel to try and see life as sportsmen and they as life as in the media so that we yeah, appreciate each other better so some yeah. of us have, some of us has done both so it's yeah actually all three of us have done both right yeah <laughs> Exactly. In a way, lah. Okay, yeah. I, I I can't say you know full fledged, but at least I did a little bit, yeah. Anyway, a little bit, lah. <laughs> <for you. laughs> a little bit, lah. Yeah. yeah. Try playing competitive rugby in leagues as well. We also don't get okay. paid. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's painful. But anyway, um, talking about you know pain. Um, this is the last question I would like to ask Mr. Said Bradley, and it's in fact the most important question of all. What is it? How did it feel like selling off your RX8? Oh. Oh, well, <laughs> I heard the drum roll there. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 was a, it was a sad moment. It was a sad moment because, you know, I had such good times when I had the car. When I first got it, you know, tip-top condition. But eventually, um, you know, it was a it was a hard car to maintain. You know, uh, it was actually in the, in the workshop for... A number of years where mm -hmm. you know they would fix one thing but and then and when when one thing is fixed you drive it and then suddenly something else is a is a problem it was it was a money draining car so it had to, it had to be so it's, uh, okay just just remember the good times you know on the contrary I, I i've had that car before and i never had any problems with the maintenance to be honest Oh, you met, you met the you reason why I sold it off because I, I thought that at that time I got a good price and I sold it off and I cried like a baby because it's the best car I've driven till today. <laughs> till yeah, today, it's still yeah. the best car because it reminds me of a bike. It just revs like a bike. Yeah, oh, great my car. Goodness. Great this, sound. This, this, oh, God. It's a sexy, it's a sexy car. Yeah. Is that, is that Russia, why? Russia won't understand it. No, no, I'm, I'm, I'm into, I'm, I'm a, I'm a pickup man. So I mean, I, I love my four by fours coming from Sarawak. Yeah. But why, why, why didn't you? I mean, even though you had problems with it, why didn't you get rid of it? I mean, just what was it that just kept you going on, keep keeping the car? I mean, this serious well, uh, question. For, for, for a while, it was very hard to get a buyer. Yeah, yeah like uh, you know, after a few years, and then we put, we put it on the market, and then uh, mm -hmm. apparently there was there was offers from. All over Malaysia, even even though the car had problems, people still wanted it. So, right. you know, I wish that happened a, a few years, few years ago, when we got a better price. Yeah, well, you know, depreciation, just like yeah. us. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna cry again. <laughs> well, you know, good luck with your, with your, you know, if, if you need any tips for comment commentating, uh, don't don't no, me. No, 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 no. What 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 car are you buying next? I don't know. I mean, it'll definitely be a family car. It'll have to be, it's, it's, you know, SUV or something. Hey, you, you, you never know. It'll be a, a Toyota 86, you know, or something of that sort. <laughs> In my dreams. Yeah, well, you know. <laughs> well, what well, would you, well, I mean, if you if you had a dream uh, uh, car, what would you get, Adi? Oh wow! Um, oh wow! You know, if if you were suddenly you know asked to play for JDT, even if a backup goalkeeper, you never know. Oh things, well, strange things have happened because you know who's who's now at the Tottenham, Mister Hart. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Strange ah, things well, have happened. I, I think I would I would get a, a Range Rover or a Ferrari. <laughs> Sport. Yeah. You know. Yeah. yeah, okay. <laughs> On the second hand RX8. <laughs> hey, when I first bought it, I I was the first player to have a sports car. Oh, uh, and now you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. Okay, so, anyway. thank you so much yeah. for your time. Yeah, on, on that note, uh, welcome. Don't forget don't forget to subscribe and uh, turn on notification on for the RSS with HD. Of course, we'd like to thank our, our sponsor, uh, clothing sponsor, oh, Amnic. Like, 
Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm getting like, confused. Uh, and thanks a lot, Admi, for, for, for being with us okay, um, thank you. on the show. For those of you out there, don't forget to, to catch us. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget mm -hmm. to turn on no, the notification. And we'll see you for the next edition of the RSS with AC. Bye-bye.